I mean, of all of you, Star, Star Trek fans are absolutely dedicated to it. I mean, how many, how many times have you seen the Star Trek movies and the Star Trek television series and so on? It, it almost matches Thunderbirds, I think, yeah. doesn't it? A lot of fans. Yeah, Karen, Karen Lewis. I, I think it does. Um, I, I feel Star Trek's more an adventure thing. That's my own personal opinion. Well, you lose yourself in the adventure yeah, with Star Trek. Yeah, I think Trek. so. And, and the fact that people are out there in space, we know we'll be there one day. And it's just, you feel, I'm going to be there in the future. I will be there. All right, well, you talk about, uh, you know, everybody needing to belong and wanting to share the enthusiasm for something. I mean, do you get out of, do you get anything serious out of this for Absolutely. your real lives in, in yeah. the fantasy and the escapism and the adventure and so on? Absolutely. You have friends to discuss it with. You play little games with each other and... <laughs> <laughs> you certainly do. Well, he's seen our show. Um, is there getting stuff out of it? There are people who have belonged to fandom, have gone on to do other things, to become... I wouldn't say famous, but they've done work. There's one person here who's written scripts for the ABC who's a fan, uh, up the back there. There are other people who've written books about the program but moved on. A lot of um, uh, Doctor Who fans in England are now writers for doing other programs. Mm. Their interest in television, Doctor Who, brought them to television. But you can't live on an interest in one program. So they've gone on to, to, to look at the other television and now they're working in it. Um, well, Ian McLean, what do you get out of it? Well, I, I can speak for my own experience, but I know a lot of other people here might have felt the same, that as a young science fiction addict, you often felt a bit alone because the people around you thought you were a little bit weird for reading those books when everyone else was outside playing football. And then if you can discover fandom, other people who like the same things that you like, you've suddenly got a whole lot of new friends. And, um, you know, you, you join a, a large science fiction club, you've got 200 friends. So you escape, <laughs> but you belong. Yeah. yeah. You wanted to make a point? Yeah, it's the only, it seems the only problem with um, science fiction, if you're, especially if you're a teenager, you sort of keep it quiet that you like science fiction, because otherwise you get teased and all that. And Even worse but, if you read comics. Because people, <laughs> people, read comics. people no, think you're kooky. Yeah, yeah, so you've got to sort of keep a hush on it, but with um, fan clubs, you get to meet other people who are um, interested mm. in the same sort of programs, and it's good, and you don't get teased. Stephen one, do you think people get anything serious out of this Abs in their real lives? Is Absolutely. In fact, I, I, I would say that not only is it a way of society coping with change and dealing with, with all of the aspects flowing on, but it also is a perfect substitute religion. In fact, I would even say that it isn't substitute religion, it is religion, complete with ideology, values, I mean it in, a, in an extremely positive way. And you have your, you your Christ-like heroes, whether it be Mr. Spock, or you have your devil characters, like, like uh, the, the Joker from Batman who, do, who, who uh, uh, is dueling with the, the uh, version of Christ, the, the hero figure in Batman. It's complete with supernatural powers. The, the whole thing is there. And as people move, especially young people, are moving away from organized religions, the substitute religions, the cults, we even use that, which is a religious term. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we, we use that term as well. That people are moving in to these new substitute forms of religion. Sorry. And that says a lot about, first of all, our traditional values and how they're failing us and how people really are, are thirsty, desperate to make some real meaning in their lives. And it's uh, people who, who are into these sort of uh, activities are actually uh, pioneers in, t in, in, in their attempts to come to grips with the conflicts that we're facing in, ch in a changing society. Well, what do you all think about that? A lot of us don't agree. No, no, no. I do not agree. I don't. Agree. Somebody up, up the back was trying to make a point. Yes. True some of the time, some, that's true for some people, but the thing that's being forgotten here when you say science fiction is escapism is that science fiction two or three decades ahead of the rest of the world talked about the bomb, pollution, greenhouse effect, overpopulation. Every problem we have was all used in science fiction when the rest of the world heard about it. Mm. So it's, you can't call it escapism if it deals with, and the TV science fiction does it in a very glossy way, the books in a more serious way. But if they're dealing with those problems, you can't call it escapism. And you can't call it substitute religion if it's actually looking at the real world. So what is it then? It's all of those things. It's all of those. For different people, it is a cult. Is. Mm. Is religious yeah. going to Hoyts every Friday? No. That's, it is. That is religious. That's, That's religious. Well, every Friday since May 26th. It's religious. <laughs> 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 it's Professor, religious. Professor Waters, is, I mean, is there anything uh, dark or sinister about uh, trying to escape into fantasy? I mean, we're talking about fantasy here as opposed to science fiction in the purest sense. Well, I've learned a new word tonight, fandom. I think that if you escape into fantasy through fandom, that... Um, uh, that doesn't have any real negative connotations. There are certainly people who 
who escape, uh, closet themselves in a room and become preoccupied with something and basically cut off their, uh, 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 cut off the relationships, cut off the rest of the outside world. Um, I think that has a whole different meaning, but the people here aren't like that. At least they don't seem to be. They seem to be <laughs> pretty outgoing people who, uh, who enjoy having fun and, have, and who've got a reasonably well socialised way of doing it. All right. Well, just tell me to finish. I mean, what do you, what do you all make of the real world? <laughs> Reality is for people who can't handle science fiction. <laughs> well, just to close, Ian McLean's got a nice story about the problems that arise when you get members of different clubs actually getting together and marrying. Well, it's... Sort of inbreed. Yeah, it's, I suppose it's a little bit materialistic, but uh, the, the thing that often concerns me, you have... Uh, uh, somebody in fandom, they've got a rather large collection, they meet a girl that they really like, she's got a very large collection too. <laughs> they, they marry, why start buying two of everything? But what worries me is if ever they get divorced, who gets the stuff? <laughs> who gets custody of the costumes? Yeah. Right. <laughs> All right, thank you very much for coming along, Gavin and Andrew, and uh, thank you for coming along too. It's been fun. Thank you.